Because this muscle is so small, I first wanted to show you where the subclavius attaches to the sternum and also the first rib. So the first thing we want to look at is the manubrium. So on the manubrium, we have a attachment of the subclavius right where this red mark is here. So that subclavius is attaching to the manubrium and it's also attaching to the first rib. So if you look at the first rib here, this is the costal cartilage of the first rib and the subclavius is going to attach to the costal cartilage. And my goal when I'm palpating this muscle is to try to get as close to where the uh, costal cartilage meets the first rib. So you can, you can see that the first rib is going to come uh, over to here and then ultimately to the uh, cervical spine. So you can see that the first rib goes underneath the clavicle. I want to try to get as close to where the costal cartilage meets the actual bone or first rib. Um, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to actually elevate the clavicle. Okay, so I've elevated the clavicle and I'm going to feel for the end of the clavicle where that clavicle meets the manubrium. And then from there, I'm going to go just off the medial end of that clavicle onto that manubrium and I'm going to compress that tissue right into the manubrium. Once I've done that, I'm going to add a friction. Again, like I've mentioned before, you might not actually see my finger moving. It's very fine. But once I add that compression, I'm going to then move my finger up and down and side to side. So compressing and then getting that friction to where I'm addressing that attachment of the subclavius. I'm going to try to get as close to that SC joint as I can. Now you're also going to have the pectoralis major attaching here. So again, I like to feel for the end of that clavicle and then that helps me to navigate where I am relative to the manubrium. Okay, so once I've addressed that, then I'm going to fall that over to the first rib. Okay, so to better access that costal cartilage of the first rib, I want to elevate the clavicle. So if you're not familiar with elevation of the clavicle, the clavicle is actually going to go in this direction. So that's a frontal plane motion of the clavicle and the scapula follows. So now that I've addressed the subclavius where it attaches to the manubrium, I'm going to go over to the costal cartilage of the first rib. So going right off that manubrium, feeling for the first rib. And again, I've already elevated that scapula, which of course elevates the clavicle, and that's going to give me better access to the costal cartilage of the first rib. So once I've got to the depth of the costal cartilage of the first rib, I'm going to then compress that subclavius into the costal cartilage of the first rib. And once I've done that, I'm going to apply that friction massage stroke to the costal cartilage of the first rib to address that subclavius there. You might be able to see that her scapula protracts quite a bit, which is also going to change the position of the clavicle. Okay, so again, I'm addressing that first rib, 
and I'm trying to follow it back as close as I can to where that costal cartilage meets the bony part of the first rib. Okay, so now that I've got that, I can kind of feel where that subclavius is then going to go on to the clavicle. So now, having a sense of where the manubrium is and also where that first rib is, I'm going to try to follow the tissue of that subclavius onto the inferior side of that clavicle and then I'm going to try to also get on to the posterior side of the clavicle. So I'm going to start from this side for her and you might see me change that up a little bit. You can see my finger and I'm sliding underneath that clavicle and then once I get there I'm going to feel for that tissue as it comes into the clavicle compressing that tissue into the clavicle and again repeating that same process where I'm compressing and adding that friction massage stroke to the subclavius as it comes into the underside of the clavicle and again it's probably hard to see my finger moving but again, it's a really, really small motion, compressing that tissue into the clavicle and then applying that friction massage stroke. Okay, now you can also see how I have my hand here. Uh, I'm trying to, as much as I can, avoid uh, breast tissue. Uh, my feeling on that, I like to work through the clothes because it allows for um, I just think it allows for the friction um, and I can get a better purchase on the tissue that I'm trying to address. Another thing I wanted to point out to you is when I come around the top side of that clavicle and I'm compressing the tissue into the inferior side of that clavicle, there are times where I'll feel that that clavicle is actually moving away from me. So the further I get away from the sternoclavicular joint or the SC joint, the further I am on that lever. So if you think about that clavicle as a lever, the further I get away from where the clavicle meets the sternum, the more leverage I have at that SC joint. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue to repeat what I've shown you already, where I come around the top of the clavicle going to use that shirt to gain a better purchase of that tissue of the subclavius and I'm ultimately going to work my way over to where that clavicle meets the acromion process of the scapula again we call that the acromion clavicular joint or AC joint so the last thing I want is to be compressing that tissue into the clavicle and have the clavicle move. So what I'll do is I'll take my other hand and put my other hand onto the superior side of the clavicle to reinforce the clavicle as I'm pressing up into the inferior side of the clavicle. Now that I've addressed the clavicular portion of that subclavius, I'm gonna feel for that anterior edge of the clavicle once I've found the anterior edge of that clavicle, I'm going to compress into that space, right up into that space where the clavicle meets the acromion process of the scapula. So I'm actually addressing the joint line of the acromioclavicular joint or AC joint. So I'm compressing right up into that joint line and getting that friction where I'm going up and down and side to side. And this can be pretty sensitive, more so than 
than some of the areas you've seen me address today. And because of that position of the scapula and position of the clavicle, it's taking me a little bit more, a little more finessing to get, to get in there, which does happen. So again, compressing right up into that joint line and getting that friction right into that space between the clavicle and the chromion process of the scapula. The last thing I want to show you today is an exercise. Her arm is at 90 degrees of flexion, her elbow is extended, and her wrist is neutral. And as you can see in the video, her form, so the right form, is perpendicular to her arm. What we're going to do here is she's locking her elbow or extending her form at the elbow joint. Her wrist is neutral, her arm is at 90 degrees. Her effort is going to be into horizontal adduction, and she's going to block that motion with her right form that's perpendicular to her arm. So even though you don't see any motion of her arm, she's actually trying to move her arm into horizontal adduction, and her right form is blocking that motion so that she's engaging muscles to provide stability of her shoulder in that position. So her effort is into horizontal adduction, She's blocking that motion with her right forearm, and that's causing an isometric contraction, right? So any muscles that do horizontal adduction are going to isometrically contract in that position because she's blocking the motion with her right forearm that's perpendicular to her left arm.